All right, good evening folks, it's Enforcer Matt, and welcome back to another Short War video. And today we have some very big news coming out about some NATO exercises coming up and some that are currently running right now in the Baltic Sea, as well as another drone, yes, another drone falling on Romanian territory and exploding, this time a little bit closer to civilians. And Romania has fessed up to it and they are acknowledging the situation. So moving into this very big news of the day, we have our first post here, which is about those NATO exercises. And this one is from Nexta and it says, NATO begins large scale exercises in the Baltic Sea to practice maneuvers to repel a Russian attack. And the North Coast maneuvers will take place off the coasts of Latvia and Estonia and about 30 ships and more than 3,000 troops from all NATO countries in the Baltic Sea area will take part. They'll also be joined by naval units from the United States, Canada, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and non-NATO Sweden. Hopefully soon to be NATO Sweden, but we are holding exercises in the Baltic Sea. Uh, and even though that isn't as contentious as the Black Sea exercises, which are coming up, and I'll address that in just a minute, these are very important as well because if Russia decides to attack one of those Baltic countries, we will need to go in with our uh, Navy and our military and respond. And these exercises are a good way to prepare for that. And also it will nonetheless have a provocative effect toward Russia uh, and let them know who's in charge right now because the Baltic Sea is also uh, somewhat contentious toward Russia, but like I said, not as much as the Black Sea. So good to see that we're taking a strong approach here. And moving on to our next one here, we learn that, uh, like we covered last night on our stream, that Romania and the U.S. are set to conduct exercises with Ukraine in the Black Sea and the Danube Delta. And the operation is going to be called Sea Breeze 23, and it's going to be a multinational exercise that will take place from the 11th to 15th of September, which is coming up right around the corner, basically next week. And this is going to be one of the biggest exercises relating to the Ukraine war the entire year of 2023. So we're going to see Romania coming out for it. The U.S. will as well. And they're also going to be in that uh, Danube Delta. And this one right here is set to possibly cause a provocation between NATO and Russia because the Black Sea is a very highly contested sea. And we've had problems in the past flying drones in the Black Sea, much less actually bringing in military vessels to conduct actual military exercises there as well. So need to keep a sharp eye on this one. This one could have the ability to break out into a much uh, more severe situation. And moving on to our next post here, we have one from Nexta. And this is about the drone found in Romania for the second time in just a few days. It says the new wreckage of Russian drone found in Romania and the Romanian president Klaus condemned the incident and stressed that it was caused by Russia's attack on Ukrainian ports. And in addition, the Romanian president discussed the situation with NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg and Stoltenberg expressed his solidarity with Romania. And I'm not going to try to you know, say that was perfectly correct. But I was saying a few days back when the first drone fell on Romania that uh, Romania should have called up Article 4 and had a conference with other NATO countries to address and send a strong message to Russia that this is not going to be permitted. Uh, they decided instead to take a very weak approach and simply issue some strong word, uh, worded statements about it. And now we have a situation where another drone, uh, and that's hard to even believe, and another one in just a short amount of time has fallen on their territory and Russia is claiming it's an accident. We have the Romanians once again saying that it wasn't intended for them. And we have NATO once again taking a weak approach and saying that they express solidarity. That does no good. I'm going to say that outright. Solidarity is, is meaningless. It's worthless uh, because it's happened for the second time in a few days. And obviously Russia has not been deterred effectively or they'd have been much more careful. And this wouldn't have happened so soon right after the last one. And like I said, that weak approach is going to give Russia a free explanation, a free pass to keep doing things like this to NATO countries without any sort of backlash whatsoever. So not good to see at all. And we also have another post here from the Kiev Post, which kind of goes over the same thing. It says it's a drone similar uh, to the one that was found before on Romanian soil. And none of these posts are really giving the location of it. Uh, we really don't have a positively confirmed location where it hit just yet. But I am told by uh, rumors, rumors at the moment that it uh, landed somewhere close to an occupied area by civilians. Uh, so not good to see whatever, uh, whatsoever, excuse me. And also we see here that the Romanian president is saying that this indicates an unacceptable breach that occurred of the airspace of a NATO state. And no joke, uh, it definitely is a pretty unacceptable breach. But if we're not going to do anything about it, 
what good does that statement do because we're not responding to it in any meaningful way. So with that, moving on from that story, we do have some very positive news about the Attackums. We learned here from Visegrad24 that the U.S. has found that it has more Attackums in its inventory than originally assessed. And what do you know, we just found some Attackums laying around somewhere. We happen to lose a few. Uh, ABC writes that this is how the U.S. will explain why it will now send Attackums to Ukraine, despite previously saying that it would be impossible. And let me get this straight right off the bat. I don't care how we found them or where they came from or whatever. As long as we're sending this equipment to Ukraine, that's all I care about. And I'm sure that's all most of you care about as well. Uh, and if we found some, you know, in a closet or something like that, uh, now they're going there, hopefully. It looks like it's very likely they're going to go to Ukraine now. And these will be extremely effective for Ukraine. Ukraine's been asking for attackers for a long time now. And they've also been asking for Taurus missiles from Germany as well. Hopefully, we'll see both of these weapons going to Ukraine very soon, but it looks like attackers are becoming very much more likely. And moving on from that very positive news, we have another topic to cover, which is the G20. And the Financial Times says, it's the weekend that will shape the world. And down here it says, the India Summit gives the West a chance to sidestep Russia and China and reimagine its relationship with the global South. Very lofty goals. Very lofty. Uh, we're dealing with people like France here. We're dealing with people like China, uh, India, and things like that. So these goals are very, very lofty to say the least. Let's see how it went. Uh, we have a post here from Nexta. We see Erdogan, uh, which is the president of Turkey, uh, asking G20 leaders to satisfy Russia's demands on the grain agreement and ease sanctions. Erdogan wants us to ensure Russian exports of food and fertilizers and reconnect Russia back to the SWIFT banking system and put them back in the international community, basically. Um, and we see here that the head of the office of the president of Ukraine responded to this by calling for the sanctions not to be lifted. And he emphasized that this uh, situation, uh, you need force and not compromises. And I would have to agree with the Ukrainian uh, head of the office of the president uh, 100%. This is not the time to be reconnecting Russia to the international banking system, uh, nor are we supposed to ensure Russian exports of food. Terrible idea by Erdogan. And Turkey is very weird, to say that lightly. Uh, this guy right here, you don't know if he's anti-Putin one day or he's pro-Russian the next. He flip-flops like crazy, and Turkey's kind of infamous for that. Uh, so apparently today he is uh, pro-Russian again. Uh, obviously, we don't bow down to the demands of terrorists, which Russia is a terrorist at this point. Uh, we're not going to reconnect them to the SWIFT system. They haven't done anything to uh, permit or allow that to happen. They haven't backed off in the war in Ukraine. And in fact, they've doubled down. So a bad, a bad idea all the way around and terrible. Uh, so let's see what else happened to the G20. We also learned that they issued a declar uh, declaration at the G20, which was quite badly worded to say the least. And Ukraine's foreign ministry says about that declaration that the G20 has nothing to boast about about this entire situation, and Ukraine condemned the declaration uh, regarding the war and showed how the document should have been written closer to reality. And the entire problem with this entire declaration is it uh, was devoid of any mention of how Russia is the aggressor in the situation and how Ukraine is the victim. It basically was written to make it seem like Ukraine is simply involved in a war and they share equal responsibility uh, to Russia for its starting, which is obviously not true. Russia started the war, and we now make that clear right off the bat, and Ukraine rewrote the entire thing to let uh, the G20 people know that they didn't like it whatsoever. And remember, India is in charge of this G20 of the year. They're the ones hosting it. So keep that in mind, that India is not really pro-Ukraine. They're more pro-Russian than anything, and this is what they think is a appropriate statement to make. So that was our last news on the G20, but obviously it's not going that good uh, for the West. Uh, and the U.S. is there, and I think the U.S. was pushing for a better statement than this, but it didn't happen, so, you know, not very good. Moving on to our next post here, we learned that the SBU attacked the election headquarters of the occupiers in the Zaporizhia region with kamikaze drones. And, of course, the Russians, with their sham elections, uh, setting up election headquarters with their fake ballots and all this other equipment, uh, and they were attacked by a Ukrainian drone. Good to see. Uh, the elections are complete jokes and uh, scams. And uh, Ukraine is letting them know what they think about it. So moving on to our next post here, we have one from Flash News Ukraine. And we learn that the Prime Minister of Ukraine, Denis, says that the first $5.4 million of confiscated assets of Russian oligarchs has been transferred uh, and will go to the rehabilitation of Ukrainian veterans. And this is a very good precedent to set. Obviously, uh, $5.4 is not a ton of money in the scheme of things. But 
it is setting the groundwork for later. Much larger sums of money can be sent to Ukraine to basically uh, compensate them for the damage done by Russia to their country and allow them to rehabilitate their people as well as help rebuild their entire country. So this is a good precedent setting moment, but not necessarily a groundbreaking amount of money. So, but it's good to see nonetheless. And moving on to our next post here, we have one from Flash News Ukraine again. And this fella is the uh, United Nations Secretary General Antonio uh, Guterres, I believe is how it's said. Not very fond of this fellow, but I'm going to reserve judgment for just a second. Uh, he says, There will probably not be a peaceful solution to Russia's war against Ukraine in the near future, since the parties to the conflict have decided to continue fighting. And if y'all probably see a problem with that wording right off the bat, uh, the parties uh, to the conflict decided to continue fighting. Well, Ukraine has not continued uh, to want to fight. They're having to because they're fighting for their country, and if they stop fighting, Russia is going to run them right over. So... Um, this fellow worded the statement very badly and poorly, and I'm sure that's probably not unintentional. Um, this fellow right here is not exactly what you'd call uh, a saint in my eyes, but um, obviously Russia is the aggressor here, like I said earlier, and Russia is the one who uh, decides to keep fighting. They could leave Ukraine. It's not their territory. It's not their country. They don't have any right to be there, and they keep killing innocent civilians as well. And the UN should really watch these statements like that because uh, whatever credibility the UN has left, they're just destroying it by this fellow coming out and making dumb remarks like that. So moving on to our last post here, we have one from Samuel Romani, and we learned some more information about the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. We haven't heard about that in a long time, thank goodness, but we're learning some disturbing information today. It says the IAEA has seen increased military activity around the plant, and mines continue to be stationed near the perimeter of the plant, but the IAEA can't confirm the new mines, but that's partially due to the obstructions of inspections. And I don't know about y'all at this point, but I'm not really uh, buying much of what the IAEA says at this point because they've been somewhat unreliable to me in the past, in my opinion. Uh, they've said things that really aren't consistent with what the Ukraine's saying, nor what the satellite footage is sh uh, showing that's on the rooftops. So take uh, what they say with a grain of salt, but it sounds like some uh, disturbing things are happening around the, uh, the nuclear power plant, and we'll probably learn more about it in the near future. But we'll have to wait for now because we really don't have a ton of details. But with that being said, that is our last piece of news for now. And of course, feel free to join us tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. We are running our nightly war news stream there. We'll have all the news that we couldn't cover during the middle of the day on tonight's stream. Also, hit the like button and subscribe as well. And hit the bell icon as well if you want to be notified of our regular uploads to stay updated on the situation international and in Ukraine. And I hope this video has been informative to you. Also, peep our Twitter page as well. Our Twitter handle is at It's the Enforcer. We post updates over there minute by minute, and that is the fastest way to stay up to date on the war. Also, down in the description below, you'll find a link to our Patreon page where you can help support us uh, monetar uh, monetarily excuse me, to help keep running these videos and making these streams to keep you all updated. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope it's been informative, and bye-bye for now.